Let's talk about the world of cinema now, because Cineworld, the world's second biggest cinema chain, is reported to be on the verge of closing all its sites in the United States and the UK and Ireland as well, a casualty, of course, of the coronavirus pandemic. Last month, Cineworld announced half-year losses of $1.6 billion. More than 5,000 jobs are at risk here in the UK. The industry has been starved of blockbusters to lure audiences back to the cinema, and it was recently announced that the new James Bond movie would not be released until next spring. Well, let's talk to the film critic Jason Solomons, who's uh, with me now. And uh, this is devastating news, isn't it, for, for moviegoers? They own so many cinemas. And was the, the delay in the James Bond movie, do you think that was the final nail in the coffin? It certainly is. And if uh, James Bond isn't brave enough to go into the movie houses, nor is Black Widow, nor is Wonder Woman, then what help? What hope do we mere mortals have? People are running scared of going back to the cinema, which is a, it's a dreadful shame. Uh, and no one knows quite whether to blame the studios for not giving us the blockbusters that would get us out of the house and off our seats and back into the cinemas. Uh, or do we blame the whole tentpole culture where now we have three or four big movies and if they don't fill up the cinemas, then the whole of cinema culture collapses. We've got to this very, very difficult moment in the cinema industry because of uh, COVID. Uh, and you can understand uh, the studios and the big producers like E.ON who make James Bond, they don't want to lose all their money. They want people to go to the cinemas. The thing is, when they do finally open Bond, next April we here now for Easter, will there be any big cinemas left on which to show their movie? And I mean, Cineworld are talking about, you know, maybe making their staff redundant in the hope that they can then come back in when the cinemas reopen, you know, implying they are going to reopen at some stage. But do you think we can say that with any confidence? I mean, surely, you know, cinemas are not just going to disappear off the planet, are they? No, but will the big ones, the multiplexes that we've grown used to since the mid 80s, which sparked a revival in cinema going itself, changed the culture of cinema going, got rid of all those flea pits that were sort of uh, clogging up the, the centre of town. But now they all moved to those out of town multiplexes and they, they've been the model for a good 30, 40 years. Generations of cinema goers have grown up with them. But right now, they're going to lie there like hulking beasts growing, growing mouldy, uh, maybe over the six months or seven months it takes to get people back in there. There isn't a, much of a model to sustain it. It's about selling popcorn and selling pick and mix. And you certainly don't want to be sticking your hands into the pick and mix at the moment. It, it's, a, it's a model that's looking very difficult to sustain when you've got this new streaming world. That's what's changed it all. The Netflix, the Amazons, the iPlayers, the, the movies, all of these are uh, making people think, well, do you know what? I might as well stay at home. It's not so noisy. It doesn't smell of hot dogs. People aren't late. I can see things when I want to. Why should I drive out to town and go to those multiplexes? So that is the big problem that is facing cinema now and facing people like James Bond. Yeah. Well, if anyone could get out of it, James Bond can. Um, what, what's the implications, do you think, for the whole movie industry, you know, the, the, the big uh, production companies, the big movie companies, the actors, the Hollywood industry, the London film industry? What, what, what are the wider implications, would you say? Do you know what? They've got so much money, that lot, that they'll be all right. They just need to kind of, you know, uh, they need to reduce their budget. They need to stop making bloated blockbusters. That's, it, it might be a good thing if you're an art house cinema or an, a fan or a fan of slightly smaller budgets. British films, for example, they may start flourishing in this new scenario. They may, it may be that we see the end of the, the blockbuster culture, which, you know, and the franchise culture where every Marvel movie is the one that makes the money. We may get people going to the cinema for other types of movies. So if you're a fan of that sort of cinema, it could be good for grassroots cinema. It could be good, could be a good sort of corrective for Hollywood, which is under, under threat right now. You know, it really is kind of seeing, you know, it's not the biggest player in the world. Movies are not the big thing anymore. Tech is, Netflix, those sort of things, platforms have really eaten into what we see as the old glamour model of Hollywood. And it might have to get back movie stars. That might be the reason to go to the movies again is to see movie stars rather than, you know, big uh, 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 computer graphics or big franchises that you're that they're, we're relying on. So we're, we're seeing a big shift at the moment and Cineworld closing, look, they're very big. You know, they could just shutter themselves down and open up again. 
So what's going to happen to the culture? We're, we're all sort of on bated breath. We all want it. We all want it to survive. I'd have thought that Bond could have been brave. You know, you'd, if there's one person that could do it, Bond could have been the only show in town in cinemas across the world for November, December, January, that Christmas period. I think he could have. But I think he could have done it and helped us survive. I'm a little bit surprised that for the second time he decided to turn that Aston Martin around and, mm. and beat a retreat. Bond bottles it, maybe. Um, but I, I, I suppose is, is the point with the Bond movie, they've just invested so much money in it. You know, they need to get that money back. They don't want to take any chances. Well, that's it. They're not taking any chances. But cinema is about risk. It's a risky business, isn't it? Especially in Bond. You know, you, perhaps they shouldn't have put so much money into it. What I think is they've got time now. And they've got time now to go away and reshoot some scenes and, 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 and put a scene in where they sort of say, oh, wow, that virus was a bit difficult to beat, you know. You're going to watch Bond at Easter and kind of, we're not going to forget all this. They're going to have to make reference to the fact that Bond has twice been laid low by the virus. Surely they're going to have to refer it. Surely Wonder Woman will. You've got time to go and overdub a couple of scenes. Mm. I want to see some, at least some reference to the virus. I'm hoping Bond can make a joke of it. I'm hoping he can beat it. Maybe we'll see James Bond in a mask. Who knows? Uh, Jason Solomons, thanks so much for, for being with us and analysing the future of the cinema industry.